Hello, everybody, once again. Hello, everybody. Here we are. We're happy to share with you another YouTube recording of PB. As you, if you've been following, we're following PB's journeys in India, which resulted in the book Search and Secret Egypt, which was his first book, which made him actually world famous. And uh, the first episodes, we, we talked about his trip to Mayor Baba and his disappointment because he came to Mayor Baba with very, very high expectations and was disappointed. Before that, we talked about PB's teachers in England and how they had all foreseen his destiny in going to India and sharing Indian knowledge with the West. And now we're going to um, continue his journey and talk about some other yogis and sages that he met. One thing we want to tell you about PDB, if we remember that India was an English colony and the English in India were kind of high society. They would sit on the porch in their fancy clothes, drinking tea served by Indian servants. And PB was very different. PB went to the remotest parts of India where he was often the first white person that they had ever seen. He lived with the people. He was besieged by beggars who wanted money, as well as by yogis and fakirs and people who wanted his attention or who wanted him to meet their teachers. He didn't really want to be treated in India as another uh, Western. Western person. Yeah. Right. He wanted to enter he into the leave. Indian reality. He wanted to live, correct? To have the real experience in India because we have to him remember ourselves that he was going there searching for spiritual uh, special uh, teachers and sages. He really wanted to go into the culture, the country, the problems. But even though um, in order to do this, most of these teachers were hidden. Mm -hmm. So PB had to be like a detective and um, all these people who wanted his attention, it taught PB discernment because he had to s decide who was worth spending his time with, who wasn't worth, who was fake, who only wanted money, et cetera, et cetera. So we see PB learning a lot of discernment and caution, and we see him learning a lot of lessons that are later reflected in his uh, mature writings in the notebooks. So what we're trying to do here is share PB's experiences to see what we can learn from them and to see what PB himself learned from them. Do you think the fact that PB was a journalist helps him in this journey? So that's a good question because PB says that it did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Many people criticize PB for being a journalist. Somehow they have a negative idea of journalists. But PB points out in this quote from the notebooks, how his journalistic background helped him. He says, I wanted to gather the real facts about the yogis of today by the method of firsthand investigation. I prided myself that experience as a journalist fitted me to draw out with the least possible delay much of the information which I sought. That sitting at the editorial desk and curtly wielding the blue pencil had trained me to become ruthlessly critical in separating wheat from chaff, and that the contact with men and women in every grade of life, which the profession generally gives, with ragged mendicants as well as well-fed millionaires, would help me move a little more smoothly through the variegated masses of India, among who I searched for those strange men, the yogis. Mm -hmm. So the answer to Grant's question is, PB felt very much mm -hmm. that his journalistic background helped him. But we'll also and see- because he has this critical mind that helps us also to discern, correct? Because since that in India, many people come and say, you have to see my teacher, I have the, you know, <laughs> He was My the more special, enlightened. he's enlightened, he's a, a sage. Everyone says their teacher is the most the, enlightened. The best. And also we know that many of us, many students, 
we do not exercise discernment in choosing our teachers mm -hmm. or deciding mm -hmm. if we meet someone who to follow. Then what happened then? Because he, you know, seems that he went in his journey after he went, Mayor After Baba. Mayor Baba, he mm -hmm. went in his journey. As we said, he had promised Mayor Baba to do some work for him. So he was going around India on behalf of Mayor Baba. But at the same time, he was conducting his own search mm -hmm to find yogis and he hadn't, he hadn't given up on Mayor Baba, but he was disappointed in Mayor Baba. So he was still looking. Mm -hmm. So what's interesting is that whoever PB met greeted him with open arms and a warm welcome, even very recondite and hidden and reserved teachers who normally would not talk to anyone, let alone a Westerner. Was that what happened the next? That, so the next he goes to Adyar Mm -hmm. um, we, South, South India. Adyar in South India, we found out from other sources that he was hoping that the Theosophical Society, which was based in Adyar, would help him find a good, good teachers, but he was disappointed. So he was living in Adyar and he's walking along a river with a friend of his one day. And as they're walking, he heard of a Hatha Yogi named Yogi Brahma. Yogi Brahma was a very advanced Hatha Yogi, and he was a recluse. He lived hidden. He didn't talk to anyone. So PB wants to meet this guy. <laughs> so they're walking along the river, and one day, um, the Yogi, Brahman, this Brahma, friend Yogi, was a, Brahman. a friend of his is a Brahman. Brahman. PB had sympathetic mm -hmm. Indians showing him around, and they see this Yogi. And he calls PB. He calls him. They see this guy walking across the street. So PB says, alongside this beautiful stream, I slowly amble one morning, accompanied by a Brahmin acquaintance who learns where my interests lie. After some time, he suddenly Grass. seizes my arm. He grabs my arm and he says, look, look. This you, is the guy. This is the guy. Do you see that young man who is approaching us? He is known to be a great yogi. He would interest you. But alas, he never talks to us. The friend really didn't believe that they could speak with this yogi because this yogi, nobody in the city knew anything about him. He never because talked he's to so anyone. recruited, right? But so quiet. But PV mm -hmm. doesn't give up. He says, I want to talk to him. So the Brahmin says, it is useless. PB says, at least I can try. The Brahmin says, no way, give it up, right? That man is so inaccessible that we know hardly anything about him. He keeps himself quite aloof from his neighbors. We must not interfere with him, right? That's kind of a rule. You don't disturb spiritual teachers and important spiritual people. But PB doesn't listen. And what surprises me is that PB was actually rude. Like PB did some things that were very impolite. He goes and he stands in front of the guy and says, I want to talk to you. It's like... <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. But what's even funny also is that they embrace him, even though he's rude. And we'll see other examples later of PB doing things that you're not supposed to do. And what he did. So PB stands yogi. in front of him, and the yogi looks him in the eye, PB says, with a penetrating gaze. And PB feels his mind is being read. And the yogi says, okay, I'll talk to you. So they start meeting together over a period of weeks. PB spends a lot of time with Brahma. Brahma teaches him about his yoga path, which is called the yoga of body control and how it can serve as a spiritual path. So we know that in Hatha yoga, you're trying to discipline and train the body, but the purpose is to give you a launching pad with to a control, disciplined mind to, to, control control, the mind to control the mind. Yeah. Nowadays, we just go to the gym and we do yoga and it's like just mm -hmm. some cool way to do exercise. Yeah. But the yoga of body control, as Brahma talks about it, is really a serious deal. And the, the yogi said that he had a teacher, correct? Right. So later we'll hear about Brahma's teacher who's mm -hmm. in the Himalayas, in my life. who he has te telepathic contact with. But now he's, PB tells him, well, I came to India because I want to find out about Indian spirituality. And Brahma says, you have not wasted your journey, for you shall learn much. It is a happy day for me that destiny brought our feet to the same spot. Whatever you wish to know and ask, so far as my oaths permit me, I shall gladly tell you. So it's like 
BB disturbs this guy who never talks to anyone. He says, I'm so happy to meet you. I'll tell you whatever I can. As far as my oaths can tell me. So we know that in spiritual matters, there are certain things you're not allowed to talk about. There's certain practices, ceremonies, etc., that are reserved. Because only. they have their vows. They have their vows have their to vows. not tell certain mm -hmm. things. So, but Brahma is very open to sharing with you. But it seems that he teach PB so, so many exercises, right? He teach but, PB a lot. A lot. But mm -hmm. He gives in the book, we're not going to share. I'm not uh, remember so well the numbers, but he said PB that was many, many, more than 80 kind of exercises that in his system, but he couldn't say all, but right. a few that. And I think it's interesting, all these reclusive sages, including PB's English teachers, see something about PB that PB doesn't know, that he has this destiny to share, reveal, and learn about Indian wisdom. So we want to ask you a question, which is, how do they know that PB is destined to bring Indian teachings to the West, and they have a responsibility to help him? What do they see that is invisible to us? And um, I think they perceive really the sincerity in the heart of O'Brien and PB, like the sincerity, the force uh, he wants really, he is determined. His motivation to, is yes. sincere. And then this is what moves these teachers. Like they see us, Mikhail, say something so much deeper because and they want to collaborate with his um, plan. Right. And I also think they see something in the subtle dimension about PB that PB doesn't know himself. Possible from past lives. They see something about his past lives. Mm -hmm. Remember, Brother M says, I see that you have many books up there waiting to be written. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we would suggest that there's other dimensions and that there's knowledge stored in these other dimensions that is not normally accessible to us, but that is accessible to these spiritually developed people.